How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel. Castile is among the top 5 most played nations on EU4 and one of the most played nations by newer players. I personally find it very enjoyable as there are a lot of different aspects of EU4 you can play through Castile. You have a very high early game army morale and the Iberian Peninsula has natural fortifications on map which help you out defensively so you can experience full scale conquest. Your national ideas are almost on par with Portugal on colonization so you can play as a colonizer. Your home trade node receives a lot of money from New World and you can potentially get a lot of merchants so you can learn the nuances of trade and become very rich mid to late game. Diplomatically, you can get personal unions on Aragon, Naples, Austria and even Portugal and get the Burgundian inheritance too. In short, Castile could be played in a lot of different ways and this is my attempt to summarize it. Just like my Austria video guide, I will lay out two guides for two different playstyles. One is for intense expansionist gameplay, which I call Colossal Castile. And the other is for a more relaxed playstyle, which I call Castile and Chill. I will divide the guides into conquest and colonization sections and a separate event section, which will be common for both guides. With the Colossal Castile guide, you're making sure you use that early army morale advantage to the max while still becoming the dominant colonizing nation by mid-game. Your main objectives before 1500 are to cripple the major colonizing nations and start colonizing Africa and Colombia so you can fabricate on nations in those regions. This aggressive strategy works better if Aragon has not rivaled you. It protects your flank and will give you a cushion in defensive wars. I would restart until Aragon is not a rival. Next, get your level 1 advisors, preferably spy master for diplo and a morale or discipline guy for military. Rival Portugal, England, and Morocco. Set your army maintenance to zero. Send the merchant from Tunis to Sevilla node and set the trade policy to hostile trading. Mothball all forts and make your heir Enrique into a general. Next, set up your estate interactions to get monarch points from burghers, clergy, and nobility. Burghers can be disloyal for a little bit. It's not a huge deal. Ally Aragon, improve relations with Austria, and start building spy network on Portugal. Invest in becoming the papal controller. Send your light ships to protect trade in Sevilla node and couple of heavies to hunt pirates in Sevilla node too. Sail rest of the ships to the Sevilla port. Next, start improving relations with the papal state. The extra papal influence comes in very handy. Royal Mary Burgundy if they haven't rivaled you. If they have rivaled you, don't worry too much about it you can still get Burgundian inheritance. Royal Mary Aragon if they haven't sent you a proposal yet. You might not be able to ally a Royal Mary Austria at the start, but keep improving relations and ally them whenever possible. You should also ally and Royal Mary Navarra and Diplo vassalize them later. Embargo your rivals. Those are the steps you need to take for the first month or so. Next are some general guidelines I follow while playing Castile. First, wait a few years and when you have some money, take the naval doctrine of shipboarding. It's literally free navy. Use the papal influence buttons. They are very helpful. If your ruler is 50 years of age and Enrique is still alive, disinherit him. A 50 prestige hit is better than decades of 000 ruler and a potential civil war event. Keep your monarch point focus on military until you get to level four military tech then switch to admin focus till you get to your first idea group. Then switch to Diplo focus. Your first idea should be exploration, administrative, influence, and quantity in that order. Your sequence and difficulty of conquest will depend on who is allied and rival to Portugal, Aragon, and Granada, when does the Iberian wedding fire, and who gets the Burgundian inheritance. So your campaign might go a bit differently, but you have significant army morale advantage compared to your neighbors, and you should win most wars. Don't forget, you get extra army morale with starting missions. First, you will attack Portugal. Your objective is to take Porto and Braganza, humiliate them, and annul their alliance with England. You should only declare when the following conditions are met. You have built up your land force limit, you have built up your navy force limit, and England is at war with France for surrender of main event. If England doesn't go to war with France, you can still win it, it's just going to take a bit longer. Hide your navy at Sevilla port before war starts. You should avoid fighting the English navy. Keep half of your army on north coastline to fight landing Brits. They will land troops on you even when their provinces are sieged down by France. That's just how AI works. Chase down the Portugal stack with the rest of your army and full siege them. England will white peace after a while. Start building spy network on Granada and their ally while at war here. Once the war is done, regenerate your manpower. If you can take the Reconquista mission before truce expires with Granada, do it. 
because next we tie Granada. Main objective is to full annex them. You should declare as soon as the truce is over. Morocco is their ally, co-belligerent them, and take Tangiers, Melilla, and Fez. Morocco might have attacked Portugal by now, so take any Portuguese provinces they own too. Core Tangiers and any Iberian provinces you take. Release Fez as a vassal and give them all non-core provinces. North African provinces have a permanent modifier, which increases coring cost by 50%. So my policy is to keep provinces with high trade value to myself and feed rest of the provinces to the vassals. If Clemson is allied to Granada, co-belligerent them, take Clemson and Veron, core these provinces. Clemson is a center of trade, and Veron gives you prestige via an event later. If Tunis is their ally, just take some money and prestige and piece them out. Start building spy network on France while at war here. If Morocco was not allied to Granada, declare immediately on them after finishing the Granadan War. You don't want to miss out on their power projection because Morocco will cease to be a valid rival soon. Next, we are going to attack Portugal again. The objective is to take Lisboa. Declare this war right after Portugal has taken exploration ideas. If you attack them too soon, they might not take exploration and you need them to build your colonial empire. They will have some small ally in this war and it shouldn't take too long to wrap it up. After you're done with Portugal, it's time for the big one the first French war. This war is tricky, but it's also very important to take some land and prevent the blue blob before they get Elon, which is their third national idea. You likely won't have enough favors with Austria at this point to call them in. If France has a major ally such as Aragon, you can try one of two things. Wait till France allies are busy with another war and won't join in, or call Aragon to fight Portugal in the previous war, and don't peace out that war. Keep an eye on your war exhaustion and manpower. Take some coastal provinces plus money from France, don't be too greedy here. Now it's time to lay low for a bit. Recover your manpower, pay off the loans. You should also deploy Annex Navarra at this point. Embrace institution, deal with the rebels, and improve relations to keep the aggressive expansion in check. Some nations will join a coalition against you at this point. After this, it depends on what the world map looks like. If Brittany is still standing, they likely have France as allies. Declare on Brittany when France is busy with another war and vassalize them. Scotland might be allied to other France or Brittany, in which case try to snag just one province from them, so you have a foothold in the British Isles. You need to get a vassal in Ireland, who you attack will depend on which nations are alive or can be released as a vassal. England usually has rebel issues around this time. Capitalize on it, attack them and take all their money. Next, attack France again and take three or four provinces and their money. Keep an eye on your aggressive expansion. Next, see if you can attack Clemson and release Algiers as vassal. Provence is another target if they are around. You might have to fight a punitive war at this point. Austria will defend you though and you should be okay. You will be above relationship limit at this point. So start annexing Brittany. You should constantly be at war as you can rotate your expansion from Europe mainland to British Isles, to North Africa, to West Africa, to Central Africa, to Eastern Africa, to the Americas and eventually to Southeast Asia. You will have to deal with Ottomans at some point as they will ally one of the three nations in North Africa. Make sure you call all your allies. Your armies are superior, but they will have the numbers. Next, let's take a quick look at our colonization plan. Keep checking your missions. They will give you a nice boost here. Once you get exploration ideas, start exploring West African Sea and Coast. Then move to Caribbean Sea and Coast. Get first colony on the Gold Coast. Second, get your colonial nation in the Caribbeans. You need five fully colonized provinces to form a colonial nation. Third, get your colonial nation in Colombia for the mission. Next should be colonial nations in Eastern America, Canada, Louisiana. Prioritize colonizing the high value trade provinces first. In between colonizing the new world, you should spare colonists for African provinces of Arguin or Bafada, to fabricate claims on Western Africa, Gabon or Luanda to fabricate claims on Central Africa, and Inhambane to fabricate claims on Eastern Africa. So you can start expanding your empire in Sub-Saharan Africa. Through Africa, you can island hop to Southeast Asia and start conquering the Spice Trade lands. Every time you see another nation starting to colonize, say England, Genoa, Savoy, or Norway, you should attack them and take the non-European land. It won't generate too much AE and you will make sure you are the only colonial nation. Well, you and your vassal Portugal. With this strategy, you're guaranteed to spawn colonialism in your province. And if you're in the mood, this guide will set you up for world conquest. Now we will look at our more casual playstyle, Castile and Chill strategy guide. Once again, it's easier if Aragon is not a rival, but it's not as important as the last guide. Get your level 1 advisors, morale or discipline guy for military is preferable. Rival France, England and Morocco. Set your army maintenance to zero, mothball all forts and make Enrique into a general. Do your state interactions to get monarch points the same way we did earlier. Ally Portugal and improve relations with Austria. Start building a spy network on Morocco. 
invest in becoming the papal controller, send your light ships to protect trade in Sevilla and two heavies to hunt pirates in the Sevilla node, sail rest of your ships to the Sevilla port, Royal Mary Burgundy if they haven't rivaled you, improve relations with the papal state, Royal Mary Portugal if they haven't sent your proposal yet, Ally and Royal Mary Austria whenever possible. Ally and Royal Mary Navarra and vassalize them later. You can also ally and Royal Mary Aragon if they aren't rivals. Issue embargo to your rivals. Build more light ships to naval force limit and send them to protect trade as well. Your first idea should be exploration, expansion, administrative and quantity in that order. Looking at conquest, we are obviously going to be less aggressive on this playstyle and focus more on colonization and getting rich. Don't worry though, you will still have a lot of wars to fight. First. We'll start with the Grenade and Reconquista. The objective is to full annex Renata and you should declare as soon as you can click on the Reconquista mission and the truce expires. We will attack Morocco or Tlemcen or Tunis depending on who is allied with Granada in the same way we did with the Colossal Castile guide. Next, we will attack the French. You have to do it early at least once to make sure the France doesn't blob too much. You should wait till you have enough favors with Austria before you declare. Austria along with Portugal or Aragon will be enough against pre elan France. Next, we will take on Tlemcen. Take provinces and release Algiers as vassal. If Iberian Wedding hasn't fired yet, you can wait for favors to accrue till Aragon or Portugal can help you out. Next wars depend on the diplomacy among other nations. You should attack Morocco again and feed some more provinces to Fez before annexing them. Next you should concentrate on getting the Western African provinces as you start colonizing. Once Iberian Wedding fires, you can break your alliance with Portugal and start to take them out bit by bit. Idea is to vassalize them eventually. In this playstyle, you'll be mainly focusing on colonizing and conquering overseas provinces. These overseas wars are really easy to win as they have significantly lower military tech than you. Once you get exploration ideas, start exploring West Africa, sea and coast, then move to Caribbean sea and coast, get first colony on Gold Coast, follow your missions and get your colonial nations in Caribbeans, get your colonial nation in Colombia next for the mission, next should be colonial nations in Brazil, La Plata and then the Americas. In between, you should spare colonists for the African provinces I mentioned earlier so you can start your conquest in Africa and Southeast Asia. You will have some competition in colonies but you should still be the biggest colonizer. Conquer all the small nations in Americas and put your colonialism CB to good use. This guy likely won't lead you to world conquest but you can definitely aim for all of New World, Africa and Southeast Asia and becoming very very rich. Finally, I will summarize the strategy around some of the main Castilian events. This section applies to both guides. First is Iberian Wedding. If you get Naples in Iberian Wedding, you can build claims on Ottomans and start cutting them down to size. You will need allies for this as Ottomans will likely have double your army size and large number of galleys. Genoa trade node is another important target here. Once you reach level 10 admin, you can make Spain diplomatically if you're at peace and have 100 legitimacy. At this point, you'll go over land and navy force limits. Don't panic and start making states in Aragon provinces. It should increase your force limit sufficiently in the next few months. If you're still above force limit, you can delete some galleys and cavalry. Burgundian inheritance is a chance event and you can't really play around it. If you get the inheritance, start chipping away at Savoy. Your main goal is again to take over the Genoa trade node. Also look for tiny nations in HRE that the empire won't protect. This will be a slow process because the AE generation is insane and you get 10 local unrest every time the empire asks for HRE lands back. If you get the Habsburg throne event, keep an eye out on Austria and claim throne when possible. There are few events associated with conquering Granada. In the Torquemada and conversion to Moors event, I always take the toleration option as it gives plus one stab. Another one is War of Las Alpujarras. This event will fire when you're converting one of the Muslim provinces in Granada. You will have to deal with about 35k rebels. Then there are some more rare events that don't fire often. You could get a personal union or Portugal if you're royal married to them. This is a very rare event which can happen between 1550 and 16 with mean time to happen of 2000 months. That's 166 plus years. Definitely rare. Another one that I see more commonly in the 1.25 patch is Navarran succession war between Castile and Aragon. You will be the defender, so your allies along with Navarra will help you out. It's an easy war to win. However, you end up with PU or Navarra, which means you have to wait 50 years instead of usual 10 years as vassal to annex them. This concludes our guides for EU Castile. I hope you enjoyed both guides and the general strategy for varied playstyle and I hope it will help the newer players just a little bit. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.